Hello and welcome to the Church of Obelis. My name is Jon. Today we're going to take a look at the position 5 role. This is a tier list based primarily on high level pop play and it's very stats based. So I'm looking at the win rates from immortal level bracket, divine level bracket, but also to a somewhat lesser extent from lower level play because most people obviously are not going to be divine or immortal players. But balance matters a lot more at the higher levels because in lower levels everyone makes so many mistakes that pretty much anything can work. But as soon as you get to like ancient divine, people have sort of an idea of what they're doing and then balance is actually important. So without further ado, we'll jump right into the list. First, the S tier. These are the best heroes in the game right now in the post 5 role. First of all, we have Ogre. The great thing about Ogre is that he's very, very easy to play, but also super strong. So this is a great hero to pick if you're playing with someone who's better than you. Like if you're queuing up with a friend who's like a thousand MMR higher than you, for example. You know, just pick an Ogre, support him, you're gonna do fine. But the great thing about this hero is that as long as you're just bloodlusting your cause, you're already doing a reasonable job. And then you just like fire blast some people, occasionally get a multicast, uh, it's kind of fun. And yeah, that, that's about it with Ogre. It's very simple, very, very straightforward hero. Most important thing is just uh, not to be timid in the laning stage. This is one of the strongest heroes at level one. You have a huge amount of armor and regions. So you just sort of go in there, you clobber people, you hit, you hit your spells on them, and you're gonna have a good time. This hero is just great across all the brackets and he's high pick rate. So yeah, he's up there in S tier. If you're talking specifically about uh, very high tier games, Bane is actually an even better plus five. This hero has an insane laning stage. He's, uh, he's got great stats. He can just uh, trade so, so well with brain sap. It's only 100 mana at the beginning and you know, it does scale up considerably but uh, you get so much damage as well as uh, healing. It's pure damage so it's a very very great single target nuke as well as healing yourself. This hero can out trade almost anyone and he's got so much single target disable. Fiend script obviously is great for, for pickoffs. Nightmare has a lot of utility. But the hero is not necessarily easy to play especially Nightmare using that uh, effectively requires some familiarity with the hero and also it's a hero that unfortunately has no real farming potential there's no way of pushing out waves and that is why he's a bit weaker in the lower tiers so this hero is great in like ancient and above but below that he's probably not the strongest hero to pick and rounding up the trial of st heroes is going to be io a hero that does really well with particular lane partners. I mean, the stuff he provides, movement speed, uh, region, attack speed, damage reduction, that's great on a lot of, core of carries, but not all of them, right? If you have uh, uh, illusion heroes, for example, they don't like Io that much because you're only going to buff up the main hero or something like a, like a Meepo or something. You're not really going to benefit much, very much from an Io. You want to have heroes that uh, ideally are fast and also ideally are ranged so that you don't have to go too far in to stay tethered. And you also typically want to have heroes that don't jump around too much, right? Because um, with your tether, you get the movement speed from fast heroes, but you don't get um, teleported with them if you have like an anti mage just blinking around. So it's hard to keep up with a hero like that. So I ideal heroes. Uh, as, as partners would be something like a, like a Gyrocopter or a Luna. One thing to note about Io is that he's kind of difficult to play and also requires some coordination from your teammates. People don't know how to play around Io and to play with Io. He can be a bit weaker, which is why he suffers in the lower levels. But uh, in your know, Divine and above, this hero is very strong, even in pub play. And of course, ideally, you play Io when you're queuing with friends. We sort of know how to play around io if you practice playing you know something like io luna for example you can have a lot of success next up you have the a tier these are heroes that are quite strong but they're not broken like the top three are 
but Trick Hero is actually also a, like an SD hero if you're like below 4K, I would say. The thing about Trick Hero is he's really, really good at pushing out waves. You have a dual breath, you have liquid fire, you have macro pyre, you have like all AoE abilities. Uh, I mean, this is also an AoE ability, but it doesn't do very much damage. The thing about lower level games is that your cores are going to be less efficient at farming. So there's going to be more farm left on the map. So the ability to farm as a support is more important in those kinds of games. And on top of just being good at farming and pushing out waves, the hero is also a, a pretty good counter to the zoo type heroes, uh, illusion heroes to a lesser extent as well, kind of countered by all the AoE. A hero like uh, Meepo, for example, hates playing in Strik hero with all this AoE stuff flying around. It's uh, kind of hard to play these kinds of heroes. So in these specific matchups, Strik hero is really good, but uh, down here in like Herald, Guardian, Crusader, Archon, the hero is just always really, really solid. Another reason why he uh, doesn't excel quite as much in high level games is that his uh, spells have high cast points. So the better people become, the more important it is to have instant cast spells and Takira is going to suffer there a little bit. But still on the whole, this hero is very, very strong. Tree and Protector, great laner, great team fighter. You can protect your towers, you can protect the uh, allied heroes. This hero offers like a very complete package and... Uh, it does not require much farm at all, so he's great as a 5. But Weaver, very flexible hero, can be played in many different positions, and is a great laner, which is what makes him so attractive as a 5. Problem is, you're not going to get quite as many items, so it's hard to afford something like an Aghanims. But still, even with a low amount of items, the hero is still quite strong, and you're so slippery that it's hard to kill you, so you don't really need to go very heavily into defensive items which is what many supports end up being forced to do so that's always quite freeing and that allows you to just you know go for something like a solar crest for example which some other heroes would not really be able to afford because they need to get like a glimmer cape or something first next up you have dazzle a hero with a decent amount of wave push with uh, his shadow wave they push out waves quite quite nicely and uh, also a hero that scales really well with items um, but you know, even as a five, you're not going to be able to afford very many items. But uh, you know, just having like a like a mana boots and mech, you're already going to make so much use of that cooldown reduction. So this, uh, and because you have shadow wave, you can also farm reasonably well. You can also use poison touch. That's also a, you can also use that to farm. So this hero is is great. It's got you know very solid win rates across the board. Big weakness of that is he doesn't have any stuns. But once you get the shards. That's also remedied because then you get, you know, it's not quite a stun, but Hex is almost as good as a stun. So that is uh, very, very strong once you get the good 20 minute mark. So that's something you always want to shoot for. Next up, you have Undying, one of the strongest laners in the game. Also doesn't have a stun and can't really get one either easily. So uh, that's a big weakness of the hero, but he's got the good team fight thanks to his tombstone. And uh, yeah, he's just... Uh, you win your lane, and it's especially strong if you have some sort of ranged carry that uh, sort of requires a front line or something like a draw, for example. You win your lane for your carry, and then you have good team fight contribution. That's like a recipe for an excellent position 5 hero. And he does all that without really requiring any farm. Next, we have another stunless hero. Venomancer, of course, doesn't have any disables except for some slows, but he does a lot of damage, and he does not require any items for that only some levels and it's also a hero that can farm quite well you can push out waves you don't really have much aoe i mean that's kind of an aoe aoe on scale but uh, mostly pushing out waves with plague wards and poison sting but uh, you still can uh, have some annoying map control uh, you can for example just d ward easily by uh, using plague wards to get upper vision and yeah the hero just i think fits the five role kind of well even though he's not like a a very common plus five hero i think he just does it does quite well as pretty good win rates and um, that's why it's up here in the a tier next up we have the biggest oversight with a lot of control in team fights with bramble maze you have curse crown and you have terrorize you also do a good amount of damage if you can get off it's kind of hard to like get off like a good uh, bedlam but if you do it's uh, it's so so satisfying 
And yeah, the Seer can also scale reasonably well, with you get like an Agnus and so on, but as a, as a 5, that's probably not your priority. But uh, yeah, the Zero has um, decent winners across the board, decent pick rate, and um, it's even higher in Immortal Bracket. So um, yeah, that's why he's up here in the A tier. Next we have Silencer, a very solid laning phase for this hero, and a very strong ultimate. And that is a great thing to have as, an, as a plus 5. If you just like have to press R and your job is already done, that is great because that means you don't need to survive for very long obviously surviving for long is, is good you don't want to die but even if you just press r and then die you will have still done your job and uh, that's a great feeling as a support and that's combined with a, like a strong laning phase you've got like a lot of damage coming off from my cane curse you can get like one point in caves of wisdom um be annoying with that and your last one is also great in the laning stage so um a very strong hero and he's like strong across all brackets and i think especially uh, in lower brackets he's, he's strong but uh, in um, high level games he still does quite quite well next up we have enigma a bit of a funky plus five hero but you can get a lot of value out of demonic conversion you can keep converting your own range creeps and deny your opponents a lot of experience if you do this it's important to um, block the camps so if you're playing him in the safe lane, you want to block the hard camp so that the off lane can't pull that camp. This way we also, we're also always going to have a good creep equilibrium, have the lane close to our tower. And with those uh, Eidolons, you don't just want to go and farm jungle camps. You generally want to be in the lane, you want to help out your carry, your skill. And often even you see at Ingmar's past 5, uh, not even level up uh, Demonic Conversion past 1 and just uh, level up Malefice instead. And that's also an ability that actually scales quite, quite well. And because farming as a support is a lot easier now than it was in the past, you're still eventually going to get your Blink Dagger and uh, BKB, and then you're still a huge, huge threat in team fights with your um, BKB Black Hole. Depends, of course, a bit on the composition. Sometimes you have uh, heroes that can easily interrupt your Black Hole, but... Uh, in most games, Enigma is going to be a very powerful force in the late game. And if you have a very powerful uh, threat on just a plus 5 hero, that can be really, really valuable. Abaddon is kind of the polar opposite of Enigma as a plus 5. Enigma has a very, very high ceiling. You can get, you know, amazing black holes and just like win an entire fight for your team. Or we can just like get your black hole interrupted after a second and not do anything in a fight. With Abaddon, on the other hand, it's uh, it's very different because you have borrowed time, you are almost impossible to burst, and so you don't need to buy survivability items for yourself. And this is a great uh, advantage to have on a plus five, and you can even use borrowed time when you're stunned. Not when you silence, but when you're stunned, you can still use borrowed time to get unstunned, and you can use a photic shield to shield your carry so if you're playing against something like a titaner for example you know titaner jumps in ravages everyone is stunned well you can just hit borrow time and then you a photic shield your carry he's going to be unstunned as well and you're going to have a good time so this is especially good in combination with uh, hard carry heroes disruptor is kind of a polarizing hero he's very strong in your head because uh, with the glimpse Whenever you win a fight, you can basically get like a, one extra kill with Glimpse. But if you're behind, Disruptor kind of feels very bad. If he's getting run at, uh, this, you don't, don't have very much that you can do there. Uh, so he's great in aggressive lineups and lineups that are sort of lacking in catch. But in uh, lineups where you fall behind, uh, he can be a bit tough to play. Uh, but still, he's got like a very high pick rate with like a roughly 50% win rate. So he's up here in 8 here. Gyrocopter is a bit of an unusual post 5 hero, but he's actually quite good as a post 5. And the reason for that is that Gyrocopter has a very strong laning stage, and it's really no different from playing him as a carry, uh, in that you have a lot of damage in the laning stage. Where you max out Rocket Barrage, you put the other points in Homing Missile, and you just have a lot, a lot of single target damage, and that's how you win your lane. And that's basically your main job as a support gyro. And then you probably get something like a Veil, because you have so much magic damage. 
and you know eventually you're gonna get a uh, Aghanim shard which is gonna make your homing missile even stronger and yeah he's not like super strong in the late game so in the late game he's definitely gonna be a, a lot worse as a support uh, compared to like Enigma but you have the strong laning stage and you also have like decent ways of pushing out waves so he's actually uh, pretty strong then we have Omni who's uh, pretty similar to Abaddon in that he has this uh, strong dispel and um, your sort of your job is to you know keep dispelling stuns and other negative effects off your carry that's your main main job also have like a nice heal which is strong in the early game but then falls off but just like a bad it's all about uh, buffing up your carry dispelling the stuns from him uh, but unlike a bad you have a higher potential team impact with guardian angel but you're also liable to get bursted, so that's something you definitely need to keep in mind and need to position yourself around that so you don't get bursted at the start of a fight. Clockwork and Nyx are both kind of similar heroes. They're these melee heroes with some nice stuns, some nice initiation. And they also both typically played as plus four heroes, but you can also pick them as a five. Um, they're maybe not quite as strong as five than as four, but um, still, if you have... Let's say, yeah, like your plus four is like a Venomancer, a hero with no stuns. And why not just pick a hero like this? Why not just pick a hero like Clockwork or Nyx Assassin? You can sort of fill in a role that uh, Venomancer cannot. And they're especially strong if you expect your carry to pick something squishy like a Drow. Um, you can just use these heroes to sort of hold off enemies from your squishy range carry. Because you have your uh, Cogs, you have uh, the, the stun with Impale. Oh, yeah and you can sort of be like a bodyguard for your carry if you have a melee carry these uh, don't uh, work nearly as well next up we have the b tier these are heroes that are fine they're balanced they're neither too strong nor too weak these are either heroes that have like an average pick rate and win rate or the heroes that have like a above average win rate but low pick rate or vice versa so they're sort of in the middle of the pack First up, we have Winter Wyvern, a hero with a fairly high pick rate in high level games and 50% win rate, which is why she's at the top of the B tier. But in low level games, she is not quite as well. So, you know, she's fine. Next, we have Marcy, a hero that's picked uh, quite a lot, uh, mostly just because she's new, but also just because she offers a very complete package. She has some mobility, some disable some nice buffs so she can work in many different positions and in plus five she's she's fine she's been ready is kind of average which is why she's up here in b tier next we have oracle a hero with which is uh, very strong in particular matchups for example you're playing against darkseer oracle it really really is a very strong counter because you can just keep dispelling its iron shells which is very very annoying if you're playing darkseer um but in other matchups, uh, Oracle does not do quite as well. And you can see in lower levels, pretty low win rates, which is primarily because Oracle is kind of hard to play and also doesn't really have a farming mechanism. Visage is a very strong laner in particular matchups. Soul Assumption is the primary tool for Visage's strength in the laning stage. And for Soul Assumption to work, you need a hero that uh, can take damage and can dish out damage. As a lane partner so this is, works great with the heroes you can sort of get in there and sort of has some kill potential like an ursa for example or a wraith king but if you have a more passive hero like let's say a uh, specter or a phantom lancer this is not gonna have such a good time in the laning stage but then once you get to level six you got your familiar so you get a lot of physical damage in addition to your magic damage and this also gives you a tower kill potential and also gives you a decent amount of, of farm so you can push out waves reasonably well with this hero even though it doesn't really have any sort of AoE um, but yeah he just offers a ton of both physical and magic damage and um, you can uh, function with uh, very little farm although experience is quite important so with this as support whatever you can find in sort of empty lane where you can sit for a bit that is great great stuff because you do want to get to level 6 uh, fairly fast and also the leveling of those familiars is so important because especially level 2 familiars are so much stronger than level 1 familiars. The damage literally doubles. Our next hero is Viper, a very strong laner. 
and you can just skill up poison attack and you can do so much damage in the laning stage and the idea behind viper as a sport is that you just sort of play super aggressively you know go in there get a kill and if you do get killed no no big deal you just you know teleport back with full hp and you just go in again and just poison attack people down get lots and lots of action going and this will allow your carry to be in a much much safer spot and this way you can win your lane for your carry and then later on you're not going to have as much impact but it sort of depends on the matchups that you have in the game because if you get a lot of value out of nether toxin you have heroes that really really rely on their passives viper can still be very strong in the mid and late game and also do mind that this is a um, disabled that goes fully through BKB, so it does full damage and slow. It's not a stun, but it's a pretty strong slow. So if you have heroes that can easily get kited, like for example a life stealer, really really hates having Viper Strike on him because his rage doesn't do anything against it, and it's just going to be very slow and uh, not going to get that much done. So uh, a hero that's uh, a, a bit of a niche, boss five, but that can work reasonably well. Next up is Pangolier, a hero that's primarily strong because of Shield Crash as a support, and really that, that buff the Shield Crash is what makes Pango as a 4 or 5 work uh, quite well. And then in addition to that, of course, you have Rolling Thunder, very strong ultimate. Um, you're not relying very much on Swashbuckler, so you never want to buy um, sort of items that buff up Swashbuckler as a support. Uh, you're just interested in like Shield Crash and Rolling Thunder. And uh, you just have uh, a disruptive team fight, team fight presence. Quite a big problem for Pango as a 5 is that he's just not as strong of a laner. So that's what keeps him from moving up higher in this tier list. Next we have Warlock, a hero that you know has fairly good win rates in lower tiers, but not quite as much in uh, the higher tiers. Also pretty low pick rates there. Um, but if you like below 4k, this hero is, I would say, more like an 8 tier hero. The reason Warlock doesn't do quite as well in high level games is because he's super cooldown reliant. Chaotic Offering is his only stun and it has a 170 second cooldown, which is enormous. Almost 3 minutes. And in high level games, they have to be more fast paced, people play on objectives. And if you have almost no contribution to team fights for 3 minutes, you can lose a lot of buildings in, in that time period. But low level players, they tend to be less objective focused and just sort of games tend to, tend to drag on for longer, so high cooldowns are not as much of an obstacle. Next up, your Skyrim Mage, a hero with a lot of single target damage, also has a silence, but mostly just about a huge amount of damage, so you can get like pick offs with the ultimate. As a plus 5, it's going to be a bit harder to afford an Atos, but it's still an item you can get eventually. Um, but you also probably want to get some defensive items because the hero is super super squishy on his own um, But yeah, if, if you play this hero you need to have uh, Stuns in your team from other positions So you want to have a stun on your post 4, you want to have a stun on your offlaner Ideally also like a stun on your carry or position 2 uh, To make up for the fact that you don't offer no stuns But if that's the case then Skyrath can definitely do quite a bit Ella Titan offers a sort lot of team fight uh, abilities as well as being a fairly strong laner. Uh, he's a bit item dependent, so you'd really would like to get an Agonims, but it's hard to farm on this hero. And that can make it a bit aw awkward. So uh, on pass 4, Ella Titan, you typically just go for super fast Agonims as, as 5, that's generally not possible. You need to go for smaller items first. Um, but even without Aghanims, Ella Titan can still provide quite a bit of team fight presence. You're not going to rely as much on the armor reduction because that is just around your main hero, but you still have the um, base resist reduction, which is great as well, which is around the spirit, and you're going to rely on your Earth Splitter. So this hero can still do quite a bit, even as a 5, even with very little farm priority. Next up, we have everyone's favorite Inquisitor it's Chen. A hero that is quite polarizing in that oftentimes you can either get like very strong games where you're snowballing, you get maybe like a kill or two or an assist at least, your carry is going to have a good game, you can get all the good creeps, your creeps don't really die very much and you can take objectives fast and have a great time. 
At other times, you're behind in the early game, you lose the laning stage, your camps get blocked, you can't really get access to good creeps, or you like get unlucky with your creep spawns, and you lose your lane, and your team is behind, and then it's very hard to come back because you don't have access to as many creep camps, your creeps that you do have tend to die a lot, and so in losing games, Chen is, can be quite, quite useless, but he makes up for it by being very strong in the winning games. So Chen has uh, very good win rates in high level games, not so much in low level games because it's just so hard to play. But uh, his pick rates, even in high level games, are very very low, which is why he's only in B tier here. AA is a pretty solid hero, you know, he's like a decent laner, you got a decent amount of impact later on. Obviously he's a great uh, counter pick against certain heroes that rely on region, like an alchemist for example. But even if those are not present, he's still going to have a decent game. Uh, so he's just here somewhere in the middle of B tier. Then we have quite possibly the least popular hero in Dota in terms of people, not in terms of pick rate, but in terms of people not wanting to play against him. And it's Techies. And Techies, you know, they're, they're actually doing decently well. Um, this, at least in sort of higher level games, because Techies actually are really, really hard to play, or at least play them well. A lot of people uh, play Techies wrong. Uh, relying sort of only on, on mining and not really being present in team fights, um, that's not how you do it. So this hero actually has uh, quite a bit of uh, impact in team fights. You know, you can just throw a remote mine in there. It's 600 damage with level three. That's a lot of damage to provide, and it's uh, eight second cooldown. Like, it's 600 AV damage and eight second cooldown. That's not bad. There's no reason you can't be in team fights. Uh, don't don't play techies with, uh, with like an, an AFK minesweeper simulation. You want to be active with this hero, and you know jump in, get your blast offs off, and then this hero can do quite well. Um, but still, the win rate is not 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 that high, so it's only in B tier. Vengeful spirit, me. Eh. She's fine. Provides like a nice aura. Having a stun is always nice. Nether Swap can be quite strong, so the Ventral Spirit is great at interrupting channeling spells. This goes through BKB as well, so if you're up against something like an Enigma, you're going to have a great time with Nether Swap. Uh, but yeah, it just provides lots of physical damage to your team. She's uh, pretty decent, but not a very good laner. Then we have Crystal Maiden and Lich, both very classic support heroes, and they're both fine. They have, both have very high pick rates, but they're not that strong. So, you know, they're here, middle of the pack, kind of heroes, uh, somewhat mediocre win rates and good pick rates. Shadow Shaman, probably better played as a position four because you do want some items, but you can still do decently well as a five and just offers a lot of stun, which is always appreciated. Next, we have Grandma, another hero that's probably a bit better as a plus four. She likes to have some farm, but even as a five, you can still get decent amounts of things done, uh, especially if you're up against uh, something like a Phoenix egg, for example, the Shredder is um, shreds through that, no pun intended. Um, but yeah, you won't have, have some farm on this hero, so I would uh, rather play her as a four than a five, but she still can be played as a five. Next up, we have a glitch in the Matrix. Undying is not supposed to be here. He's supposed to be here in A tier because he's actually really strong as a 5. Magnus uh, is not really traditional in plus 5, but he can play him as a 5. Minions are not too bad, but pick rates are fairly low, so, you know, B tier, whatever. Uh, and here's another uh, glitch in the Matrix. Dragon is also not supposed to be <laughs> his, his proper place up here. Um, then we have Nature's Prophet. A hero with a very low win rate in lower level games. And once you get to Immortal, when people actually know how to play him, he's actually decent as a 5. So the great thing about plus 5 Nature's Prophet is that you can split push almost as well as a plus 3 Nature's Prophet, but you're just a lot more expendable. Uh, but of course, you still have low impact in team fights. And that is sort of the primary reason why the hero does not do well in lower level games. Also, it's just like really, really hard to play. Actually, like just legitimately one of the hardest heroes in the game. And uh, the problem is also that he sort of doesn't feel to be as hard. You know, if you're if you're playing Invoker and you just uh, keep messing up your combos, uh, you, like the game sort of tells you that you're that you suck. Whereas Nature's Prophet, this all often you can it's often not as obvious whether you're doing a good job. If you like. Uh, 
split push and die you know sometimes that's a good thing sometimes the bad thing it's hard to judge and uh, a lot of people overestimate their ability to play in this profit and then finally rounding out the b tier is tusk more of a plus four hero but you know similar to clockwork or next assassin if you really want to have some sort of brawling a melee strength hero in plus five you can pick tusk but you know you're probably better off just picking clockwork or nyx down here in the c tier we have a spirit breaker similar story for him play him as a four or even as a three spirit breaker is very very strong in those positions but as five not that great agna uh, can be can be kind of nice as a support of course you have another ward which uh, is against certain heroes very very powerful very annoying and he's a pretty good laner but he does not have any sort of stuns and that's always a big problem and needs a lot of, a lot of value to make up for that and pagna generally does not although again against certain heroes like if playing against od for example like od just legitimately cannot fight without bkb against pagna but of course it's plus five you generally have to pick in the first phase so you can't really counter pick shadow demon also good in certain matchup situations but he's actually better as a plus four uh, he actually has pretty good farming potential with uh, his uh, shadow poison and again in certain matchups certain combinations he's quite good with disruption but um his win rate generally not that high pick rate also not that high dawnbreaker you know a decent hero very flexible but uh, as a five she's a bit lacking but i think she's, she does better as an offlaner Wind Ranger, just not enough farm priority as a 5. Uh, Wind Ranger without any items is very unimpressive. So I would not play as a 5. Witch Doctor, a uh, pretty fun plus 5 hero to play. It's also why he's fairly high pick rates, but his win rates are really nothing to write home about. And like the higher you go, the lower the win rates get. So if you're like uh, below 3k or something, Witch Doctor is a fine hero to play. But in higher level games, he really, really suffers. Grimstroke, just a very overrated hero, both as a plus 4 or plus 5. He's got high pick rates, but his win rate's really not that great. He's good in certain combinations, but um, the hero on the whole just doesn't win that much. Cottle is kind of in an awkward spot. Uh, the hero without a real disable. Uh, he's got decent team fight contribution but right now i just don't think he's in a very good spot similar thing for lion he does have lots of stuns but he's just so squishy and uh, it's hard to make him work and yeah he also kind of kind of need to have a blink dagger with lion you need to have some defensive item ideally and getting to there as lion who doesn't really farm very much is kind of hard as a five phoenix kind of wants to have like a little bit more farm priority he can work as a as a five but it's sort of matchup dependent a certain years that really would not want to face phoenix but again you have to first pick generally as a support so you can't really counter pick Woodwing, yeah just kind of meh she's just not that good mirana needs more farm priority she's great as a four as a five eh, not really pudge he is okay as a 4 actually, but as a 5, just, just really, really bad. Don't pick him. Monkey King uh, was kind of one of the meta 5 heroes for a little bit, but uh, then it's been nerfed, and I would recommend against Pain Blame as a support right now. Got Bounty Hunter, uh, wants more farm priority, doesn't do that well as a 5. Rubik uh, also... Once more farm priority and also in general, even as a four, he's not uh, that that great. He's very hard to play and a lot of people really overestimate the ability to play Rubik. I would recommend against uh, learning this hero. Enchantress actually does quite well in organized competitive play, but in pubs, she doesn't Enchantress. offer nearly as much. Their win rates are abysmally low across all the brackets. Enchantress is really, really good at winning her lane and at pretty much nothing else. And in pro play, that's like, that's enough impact for a plus five. If your plus five enables your carry to come online, win this lane, that's good enough. But uh, in less organized gameplay where games tend to go longer, only winning the laning stage is not good enough. 
though she's down here in the D tier. And then finally we've got Lina. I have no idea why people pick Lina as a 4 or 5. She just is not good in that role right now. She's great as a mid laner, but as a support, leaves a lot to be desired. So just don't pick her. Her win rates are abysmal as a plus 5. And that about does it for this tier list. Let me know in the comment section if there's any heroes I missed or any heroes that you think should be higher or lower. And do click on the two videos on the screen. There you can see my position three and four tier lists and Obelisville Ling. I'll see you there.